Hello and welcome to Bitfumes. I'm your host Sarthak and this video is all about the amazing WAP terminal. So are you getting bored of using this kind of terminal where you cannot do stuffs you love to do on your favorite IDE like VS Code or IntelliJ thing. So you cannot just jump directly here between the words. You cannot directly do the multi cursor thing. You cannot do a lot of steps in terminal because it's old way fashion. But now we have something amazing which we call the warp. It's your terminal reimagined. So let's get started with warp and see how we can set it up for your macOS because right now it's only available in macOS and soon will be available for Windows and Linux. So first of all you can use the brew command to install it. So I'm going to install it here and say brew install cask warp. So this is going to have the warp in your system. Now warp is installed in my system and I can just search for warp and it's here. The very first thing I need to do is not the sign up but I will go on the privacy setting and clear out some privacy thing. So I don't want to send any information to warp because this is my personal thing where I do my development where I have many secure things which I don't want to send. Security comes first. So first of all I'm going to uncheck and say that I don't want to send any app information plus I don't want to send any crash reports. Now this is closed and to use this swap you need to sign up here. So I will be back after signing up just in few seconds. So after signing up it will be like this on the web and if I open my warp, it's saying that thank you for joining the warp. So let's hit enter and some of the questions which I don't want to answer but I have no choice to escape it. I'm a shred. So it's a uh, uh, internet. I got this information. Where are internet? Oh my god, this is bad. Google. I'm going to use it for personal use and hit next. Go to warp. Who? Finally, I am here. So this doesn't seems like any terminal. It's more of an IDE or a VS code kind of thing where I can do a lot of things. But I can just close it and I can close this one too and boom this is my terminal. Yes I'm going to use it. I say ls cool. I say cd into something and you got this point. I am getting this auto suggestion. You can see in my bottom of this terminal I can see I have this my app so if I hit tab it's suggesting me some of the things so one is this suggestion my app because I used this command previously so I can just press a right arrow to complete it but I can get back and I can hit the tab to get the auto suggestions for the directory inside this CD uh, the directory where I am. So, so you can see application, uh, desktop, document, a lot of things are there and I can press it. Cool, everything is here. Okay, so let's get started with this warp. To get started with the warp, I just want to see and feel the look. So first of all, I can see there is something written here. If I click, it just selected it out and it's not selecting whole of the terminal but section. And they call this section as a block. So this is the block and then this is the block and then finally the terminal is here at the bottom. Now how do we communicate between the blocks or how do we move between the blocks? So you just need to press your command and up key to move into the block. Now what is the purpose of moving into the block? Can we just use it or can we continue over it? No, you don't want to continue over the block but what you can do, you can go in there and you can copy the content of this block. So you can see if I go here on the three dot, I can click, it says that you can find something on the block by saying command F and you can toggle the bookmark. You can bookmark that entire block to the warp also. You can navigate between this like scroll to the top of the block or bottom of the block. You can do a lot of things for the block. But you can see it says copy both or copy the command or copy the output. So basically you can say 
command C to copy the LS. So if I just paste it, it has actually copied everything because I pressed the command C, which is both. If I just want to copy the command, I need to say command shift and C on here and then go on at the bottom and say paste. You can see it pasted just the LS. And now what about the output? So for the output, I need to use the option key also. So I will say, hey, command shift option and C and then paste it. You can see entire block is pasted. Okay. So that's great. I can press control A to select everything on this block and hit delete to delete entirely. One really amazing feature of Warp I like to have is the background block. So we learned about different kind of blocks, how we can navigate it. But what if I have a command like ping bitfumes.com. So this one is pinging. Now what if I want to say something like ls? I cannot do that since there is a continuous output going on. So what I have to do, I need to open the new tab which is irritating because I want to see the output, how it's working and also want to do something else. So what we can do with the warp is, first of all, I will kill it by pressing Control c and Command k to clear it out and I will say pink bitfilms.com and I will add the right arrow to complete it and at the last I will say this ampersand sign and with this ampersand sign I can hit enter and you can see this is running there is an output but the input prompt is here input is here at any time I can just say ls it's doing that and now it's continuing the output over this. I just want to have some configuration in the warp. So how we can do that? First of all, you can see, yeah, we have this tab. If I want to open another tab, I can press command T here to open the new tab and command W to just close the tab. That's good. Now, what if I want to move this prompt, which is at the bottom to the top? Because it's like familiar to me. If I open a terminal, the prompt should be at the top. So first of all, you need to go to this icon, which is the setting icon, or you can press the command option. So I can just press command option like this. And here I am. So let's go to the appearance. And the very first thing I want to do in the appearance. So here's the one input position. So I can say that, hey, it should be at the top, the classic mode. Now, what it's looking, so yeah, you can see it is at the top. If I say LS, yep, that's great. And it's like familiar to me, which I used to have on my normal terminal. But there is another option. You can go once again and you can say pin to the top. Now, what is pin to the top? That means all the output will go downwards, but the prompt or the input source it will always be at the top so even if i say now print working directory you can see the output will stacking below the input so input will stay at the top always so i feel like this is good but if you want to use the classic mode that's up to you now let's quickly explore the appearance section what we have so from the top it's like the theme for the dark mode or the light mode and this is the opacity which I don't like at all because it's distracting to have the background stuffs I have. Now we have already explored the input position and the prompt. This is really really amazing. So right now you can see I just have this tilde here like this line and I want to add more information to this. I can go on the prompt section and let's say I want to add that current date. So I will drag it, save it and now you can see I have the date here. So this is pretty nice if you want to fit, if you want to check for some of the things. I like to have my name here so I can say the Alice and the time in the AM PM format. So that's good. So this is really helpful when you want to see what environment you are right in. So like right now I am in this user. So after that you have this dim the panel and jump to the block. Here is the font section which you can use. The default is hack. I used to have the feeder code which I really like and I want to jump up the font size to 
1.4 and the line height to 2 which I really really like. Okay next is like blinking of the cursor if you find this blinking cursor irritating you can turn it off but I like to have this one so that I will know that where is my prompt this blinking cursor says that hey here I am. So let's get back to the original one for this which I have cool. So we call warp as the advanced terminal and in terminal we write commands so it should have or it must have amazing command related features. So one I'm going to show is the command alias expansion. So what if I say git checkout with gco. When I say gco and if I hover over it, it's going to explain me what this command is doing. It says it's an alias for git checkout. Now, if I say, um, let's say pwd print working directory, hover over it, it says that, hey, it's going to return the working directory name. It's really amazing when you know the command, but you don't know what the command is called and what it actually doing behind the scene. This is pretty interesting but over this in normal terminal you will not get any intuition that something is wrong so instead of git suppose i type gti now this time your normal terminal will say nothing but here what suggesting with the dotted red line below it and it says that there is some problem with it since with this command system, we got so many amazing things. There is really cool stuff inside the warp. Now, I remember I told you about the GCO. Yes, it's a git checkout. And if I press tab here, it's going to suggest me what this command is and some other command similar to this kind of command. So I can just move with my navigation keys up and down to see what else we can have related to gco but i just want to expand it with the real command so that i will not forget what gco is going to do like git checkout so yes i want to type gco but in the end i want all the git checkout so this is a really fun way to do this so first of all you need to press control P here inside this warp terminal and search for enable or disable enable alias yeah enable alias expansion once you have enabled the alias expansion now what you can do here is once you type gco and if you hit space bar it's just complete out that shortcut or that the alias with the original command you have isn't it really amazing because you are not going to forget the original command you have even you are writing the alias for your command. Now one of the amazing feature of a better terminal is the history of the command. So suppose I have ls and I want to see what are the commands I have previously ran with the ls. So I need to press the up key here and you can see I got two suggestions because I just have the two command written on the warp related to the ls same i can do with any command like git or anyone but there is one more cool feature so another way of getting into the history is pressing ctrl r while you're writing something so with related to ls if there's any command you have used in the past then it's showing here so like docker compose ls or I can say ps and press command r and I will find a lot of ps related command. So I should have the docker ps. That's good. So this is the way we can get out the old history commands which is extremely useful because you don't want to write it out all the way. In the starting I said that this warp is more of a terminal but in the form of an IDE. So in the IDE, you can split the pane to work on different different things in the same window. So I can press command D to create another pane or command shift D to create another pane on the right. Now this can be continued like this. But with this pane, there is really cool feature which only warp has is the syncing of the command. So I can just 
on any of the pane i can just press uh, like command option and i and you will see there is a little icon here so if i once again press command shift command option and i you can see it i can toggle now what are the benefit of this see this magic i can say print working directory and it is synchronized everywhere now i say like ls it's synchronized everywhere and you can obviously use command w to close all these panes cool so this is all new amazing pane in the warp but when you're working with a lot of commands and a lot of tabs it becomes really hard to navigate between the tab plus it's really hard to find even which tab i'm working what so i already told you you can create new tab by pressing command t and you can close the tab by pressing command w but you can also do more thing with that so let's open three commands and one command is print working directory okay second one is ls and third one is just git now i don't know where i am what if i shuffle them now i cannot find which tab is doing what so i can quickly rename it by pressing right key so i can say hey this one is my ls this one second is the print working directory and third one is the git obviously you do not write the command you write what you are doing on that tab even after this you can also do one more amazing thing which is giving a proper color to every kind of terminal or the thing you are doing this is really really nice when you have some theme for your local your production or any other environment you are having so maybe red one is the production one you don't have to touch this green is for general purpose thing and the purple is for your local environment isn't it really really amazing to see how powerful this warp is but once again how about the navigating between the tabs you don't want to use your cursor so in that case what i can see is if you go on this key binding and search for tab here is the activate new tab by pressing command shift and right or left braces so if i want to go into the git one i will press command shift and right the curly braces and similarly go on the left i press the left and finally you can also rearrange these tabs closer to the one you are working so that you don't want to uh, navigate and press a lot of keys just for the navigation now we are at the end of this video and you know that warp is really really amazing and it has a lot of amazing feature which i cannot just keep on showing to you but i only want to talk about the feature which is everywhere nowadays and yes you guessed it right which is the ai feature so how ai feature can help you in this way of using warp so first of all suppose you are having this command and you want to get ask ai anything right here from the free version of warp so just press control and spacebar here is the warp ai and you can see it says that you only have 10 prompt available and every day you get 100 actually 100 not the 10 so 100 prompt available for a day now you can ask anything for this and basically this is it open ai chat gpt so i can simply say that uh, what is the command to create a sim link like this okay so now getting the answer so just wait and you can see we have a demo you can copy it and you can just paste it right there that's really really cool and that's why this warp is so great that it can have the ai integration right here but it's not that amazing because you can do that with any other ai tool but the things really get amazing when you can ask ai right here from the terminal from the input section so when there is nothing written here press ctrl r to have the command search here you can ask anything so i want to ask for the ai suggestion and here i can say hey ask the ai and i can say uh, write me a 
regex to select a email symbol so i get it and the powerful thing is i can just hit enter and here is the one i get that exactly all of these things right here in my terminal at this point and this commander is really powerful because you can check out the history get the workflow we do we haven't talked about the workflow workflow is basically uh, some of the commands you can or some of the script you can write to create a workflow which can do a lot of things in one go i just want to leave it for now because it's just a demo not a full course on the warp ai so you can check it out but this is a cool thing so ai is taking over the integration on this kind of terminals and this is really cool so the question are you going to use the warp or is there any better tool available for this warp comment below and let me know if there is something amazing out there I will going to create video on that and 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 don't forget to subscribe to this Bitfilm YouTube channel because you know this channel is having a lot of views but very few subscribers you can see only 14.2% of all my viewers go and subscribe to this channel so this is your chance to help me out to say that hey Sarthak you are doing really amazing work I'm going to subscribe right now Hit like this video if this video helped you and follow me on any platform with Sarthak Savvy. See you in the next video.